Let's create this e-learning interaction and articulate storyline. This is a process when I receive the script from the client. This is just a sample process. This is a sample content. This is not real. And I'm just going to go over what I typically do. And I look over this content and I figure out what I want to do with this particular slide or this content. And I see four sections and my thought process here is going to be that I'm going to turn it into an infographic interaction with four separate layers or four separate buttons that come up. Next, I go to freepick.com. This is my number one go-to website for my assets and resources and vector files uh, more than Canva. I just feel like there's a lot more options here than uh, in terms of infographics and how you can apply that for e-learning. And as a contract instructional designer that focuses on building professional quality e-learning deliverables, I would say majority of the time is spent doing what you see here. Just searching around, finding the right infographic for your particular slide. And you can spend so much time just browsing through. And I would say, even though it takes a lot of time just searching through the right asset and right vector to modify, this is gonna be far quicker than trying to develop something on your own. First of all, we're not graphic designers. We're not, you know, we're not infographic designers either. We're, we're compiling everything. We're bringing in uh, voiceovers, we're bringing in assets and we're creating the triggers and configuring it and articulate storyline. And so majority of your time is spent doing what you see here. Um, this is what I do uh, every day, just looking through and finding the right vector graphic to edit and modify to my particular content. And I go through and if it looks like I can't find anything, I go back to the script and figure out other keywords that I can use related to my content and see if I can get a, a better luck finding something. And once I find something I like that I could potentially use, I'll open it up in a new tab uh, just to reference it back before I download it. And you can see here that I'm gonna click on artificial intelligence, opening it up in a new tab, and then I'm gonna go back to the results slide and look for some more. I know this is a tedious process, but if you're gonna make your slides look professional and, and you're gonna to try to do it in a reasonable amount of time, this is probably the best way to go. This is the process I've been doing for probably the past 10 years. And it's a lot quicker than you trying to come up with your own design and trying to use your graphic design skills. You know, if we, uh, I don't have any, but if you have any, it's gonna take you probably days to come up with one really cool looking infographic. And you can see here, this is another option as a, a potential infographic to use. And here I am just going back, searching and searching trying to find a right infographic to fit for my content. And here's one more that I chose as a, a potential option. And it's artificial intelligence related. It looks clean. Maybe I, my, I probably thought about using that as like a, a pop-up to the layers. And then I'm gonna go back to my other tab and download that vector file so I can begin editing it in Adobe Illustrator. I also want to note uh, freepick.com is a free site that you can, there's a whole bunch of free versions or free files that you could download. I'm using the paid version, which just, which has more uh, design options that you can use and you don't need to attribute when you're uh, building it out. Now I have Adobe Illustrator open and I'm going to start extracting or separating the elements so that I could only, so that I'll use only the ones that I need. And I'm right now I'm pasting in just a sample color palette. Just because it's a demonstration, I'm going to swap out the colors and uh, make it not look purple. And so what I'm doing now is just changing the colors around, primarily using the direct selection tool, the selection tool, and the eyedropper. And you can see here, I'm just changing those little circles to be white and using the eyedropper. And then eventually what I'm going to do is keep the ones that I want to keep, those are the ones that I'm going to export. 
And the way you export the asset is you grab the element, drag it over to the asset export panel like that. And you do that for all the elements that you want. So I'm exporting the chip, the background, the little background decoration, along with the circle and then the line. And then you keep doing that for all the ones that you want to export. And here I'm deleting all the elements that I most likely won't be using because text, all the text elements, you're going to be recreating that in Articulate Storyline because it looks more crisp and it's better for 508 compliance. Now we're going to go into Storyline. We have a blank canvas and we're going to start bringing in the assets. Most likely they're going to be PNG files starting with the background. I'm just going to drag it over, place it onto the canvas and then kind of re scale it so that it fits the canvas and then i'm going to bring all of the other assets in as well and once you do that i'm just going to preview make sure that everything looks good next i'm going to bring in the other elements and this one i'm just going to duplicate so that or duplicate just because it's going to be the same exact shape and i'm going to also start recreating the text uh, in articulate storyline and here you can see me uh, referencing the word document script to make sure that i have the right text on the canvas or a slide now i'm going to go back to free pick and i'm going to go to the icon section of free pick there's an icon section uh, on the right or towards the middle and i'm going to start looking for icons related to machine learning and all of these sub bullets that we saw in the word document and similarly, what we're going to do is just look for relevant icons that uh, fits into our content. And then we're going to either save the file or copy it and drag it over to our Illustrator uh, canvas. And once I do that, uh, it's always going to be black. So I'm going to change the colors around. For this one, I'm going to change it to white. For all of the four items, we're going to change it to white. And throughout this whole process, you see me referencing the content and the script to make sure that I am using relevant keywords to get the icons. And in Illustrator, I'm gonna export it out into a folder and then I'm gonna drop it into Articulate Storyline. And I'm just basically doing this for all of the four subsections, four separate icons and bring it in, adjusting it, scaling it and making it fit. Now I'm creating the text for the four sub subsections. I'm just duplicating the text, I'm shrinking the size, changing the font weight or font style. Instead of extra bold, I'm gonna do just regular. Uh, it could be any font style or the font style that your client wants. And doing that for all of the subsections and just making, you know, small changes, uh, making sure it's aligned properly and doing that for all four. All the while, you're gonna reference the storyboard occasionally or go back and forth, make sure that you have the right text and that everything is aligning properly in terms of uh, the actual content. Now here, I'm looking at the infographic and those so four subsections should be clickable, but for now, it doesn't look like it. So what I'm doing is just modifying a little bit so that it looks like a clickable area and so I'm creating a solid circle here and I'm gonna add a drop shadow. And then you can do that in the effects panel of Adobe Illustrator and just adjust the numbers to your liking. And you can see that I'm adjusting a little bit more. I ultimately change the white to something else and just making uh, additional modifications to fit our particular interaction. Then I'm gonna duplicate that particular element and for the other side, I'm gonna reflect it do a vertical reflection. Now we have the two elements and then we're going to drag it out and export the assets. Then we're going to bring it inside Storyline. I'm going to go inside of the grouping, find the particular element that I want to swap out and replace it. And then I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. Now we have an infographic where those elements look clickable because of the drop shadow effect and it looks more like an interaction that the learner can uh, actually interact with. And we got the first part of it down. The next step is creating those uh, extra layers or the light boxes that's gonna come in when the learner clicks on those buttons. So I'm back in freepick.com and I'm gonna look for uh, the keyword pop-up and see 
what type of designs might go well with what we have. Again, it's just a matter of looking through, going through the pages and picking the right design that might go well. And it turns out there was nothing that I found interesting that I liked. So I'm actually going to Google and searching for pop-up UI inspiration and just looking for design ideas and finding a layout that I think might fit well for this course. And I finally found one. So I'm gonna copy that design or copy the screenshot or the image and I'm gonna paste it over as a reference image to build out my layers. I got the reference image, I paste it on the left. Now I'm gonna use rectangles and shapes to build out this pop-up layer. And this is on a new layer, not the base slide, but on a new layer, as you can see on the bottom right. I'm gonna create, uh, first I created the dark uh, background, but I swap it out to white with a little bit of transparency. That was the background. Now we're gonna build the actual pop-up using more rectangles and uh, text. It's already starting to take shape. You can see it looks very similar to the reference pop-up that we have. And now we're gonna bring in some icons uh, instead of that text we see on the left. I'm going back to Adobe Illustrator. I am rescaling or also pasting in the, the color palette to reference from. And then I'm gonna bring in the icons that we used earlier just rescale it to be a little bigger so that it's not blurry when I expand it. Then I reference the Word documents more and then start building out the text uh, from the actual content. Then we want to create a rectangular shape to create the close button that will hide the pop-up so that it goes back to the base layer. And you just play around with the colors, the shape colors and sample the color palette and then put in some text. Then we're gonna create the trigger that is gonna close the interaction. So we're gonna do hide layer, hide this layer when user clicks that rectangular close button. Now we're gonna add in some animations, basic subtle animations that's gonna happen when this layer pops up. And you can see me here moving the timeline around a little bit and also occasionally referencing the storyboard or the content to make sure that the text on the slide is accurate. And from there, we're gonna go to the base slide and now we're gonna create the trigger that's gonna show the, the extra layer uh, when the learner clicks. So on that button, I create a trigger to show layer AI when the user clicks group six. And let's preview. Once I click on it, the layer pops up Looks good. And I'm gonna make a little bit more adjustments and then we're gonna preview again and the interaction works and looks good. And if you close it, the layer closes. Now that the layer in the pop-up or the pop-up works for one of the sections, we're gonna duplicate that and repeat those steps for the other three sections. Now I'm gonna preview and the interaction is fully done. You can see that when I click on the buttons, there's a visited state uh, and then the layer pops up and then it closes and we are pretty much done with the interaction. Next, we're gonna add a little bit more. We're going to paste in the script and then create the audio narration. You can paste it into the notes section and then you go to your insert audio and then you can do the text-to-speech narration. You can preview the text-to-speech audio by clicking on the preview button. Um, the feature has gotten a little better, still is not as good as Wellsa Labs or other paid subscriptions, but pick the one you like and then we're gonna copy it from the notes. Now it's gonna show up on your timeline and let's go ahead and preview. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a powerful technology that's changing. The audio sounds good. Now we're going to work on the slide properties. Um, make sure that the seek bar is there. I noticed that the player didn't have a seek bar. So we're going to go to the player tab and go down and click on playback speed um, and also the play pause and then the seek bar. 
And there are other features you could play around with, for example, accessibility, but uh, that's up to you. And let's preview again. Artificial intelligence, AI. All right, I just noticed something. The text was overlapping during the animation. So I'm gonna go back to the layer on the timeline and adjust the order. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a powerful intelligence. There are ones to learn more. Okay, the preview looks good. Be sure when you're creating interactions that you have text instructions on the screen as well. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a powerful technology that's changing how businesses op. Notice how the click on the icons to learn more text showed up. Um, now I'm just going to scoot it more towards the end. Next, I'm going to change the slide title from untitled slide into the actual title. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a powerful technology that's changed. Click on the icons to learn more. Here, I'm adding a, a bit more spice. I'm inputting the emphasis animation, which is a new storyline feature in Articulate Storyline. I'm going to be adding the pulse effect to the instructions, the text instructions on screen. Then you go to the trigger section, and instead of when user clicks, the animation is going to happen when the timeline ends. Next, I'm going to add a emphasis animation to the actual buttons. I'm going to add a shake effect to all four of these buttons so that when the user hovers over, it's going to shake. Go to the triggers panel and then find when the learner hovers over that particular state. Let's preview one more time. Artificial intelligence icons to learn more. All right, I just made a mistake. Instead of user clicking, it shows that it's showing the layer when the learner is hovering over, which we don't want. So we're gonna change it. We're gonna have it so that when they click on the button, it's going to show the layer when user clicks. And for the emphasis, we're gonna show it when the user hovers over. Artificial and I. Click on there the icons go. to learn more. And it's working properly. Next, what I'm doing is copying over all of the triggers for the rest of the buttons. I'm going to be pasting in the emphasis and I'm going to be pasting in the uh, show layers. Artificial intelligence AI is a powerful means to learn more. And it looks like all of the buttons are working. And when I click on it, all the layers are popping up and at this point I'm pretty much done I think from here I'm just playing around and uh, messing around with the emphasis and emphasis animation I'm trying to create the emphasis animation for the bottom text instructions uh, uh, element or the text so that it appears uh, the, uh, so that it emphasizes the whole time and not just when the timeline ends so I'm going into the triggers panel and I'm gonna create a new uh, trigger where the emphasis animation happens when the animation of that emphasis animation uh, finishes. So basically it's just going to loop. You can see that the click on the icons to learn more text is pulsing forever. And here I'm not really sure what I was trying to do. Um, oh, that's right. I think I was trying to get the pulsing of the text to stop when the learner clicks on the actual layer. And here since I don't know if that feature works, here I am on Google trying to search it up. And I don't think there is a feature like that. And that's it. Let's preview one last time of our interaction. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a powerful technology that's changing how businesses operate. At its core, AI enables machines to do tasks that usually need human intelligence. There are a few main parts to AI. Click on the icons to learn more. And that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the thought process of how I go about building e-learning interactions and e-learning slides in Articulate Storyline. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away.